Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. Present each week at this time, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Well, Christmas is still a few days away, but I imagine in most of your homes, the festivities have already started for the youngsters. Yes, with the kids on vacation, there are probably plenty of parties and occasions when friends drop in. Now, that calls for a well-filled cookie jar. Yes, and a big bowl of popcorn now and then. So here's a tip. For cookies that fairly melt in your mouth, try making them with parquet margarine for the shortening. You see, besides being grand for table use as a spread for bread and seasoning for hot vegetables, parquet, when used as a shortening, adds delicate extra flavor to all baked foods. Try parquet melted over popcorn, too, and just watch the youngsters go for it. Best of all, these Christmas treats aren't expensive when you use economical parquet. So get your holiday supply of parquet margarine tomorrow and surprise the youngsters with the best holiday cookies and popcorn they ever tasted. Just ask your dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve. With December almost gone... He's been working like a beaver the past few days, trying to get out the annual report of the water department. That's why we find him now in his office asleep at 9 o'clock in the morning, with his head buried in the annual report and his arms sprawled across the blotter, while through his troubled dreams run thoughts of this happy holiday season. Get at that Christmas card list, Uncle Mo. All right, Marjorie. Model airplane. That's all I want for Christmas. A model airplane. I know, Leroy. I know. How about that annual report, Mr. Gildersleeve? Right away, Miss Fitch. How many for Christmas dinner, Mr. Gildersleeve? Can't order till I know how many. Give me a chance, Bertie. Just because I'm giving you a present, Throckmorton, I don't want you to think you have to give me a present. Oh, Leela, I almost forgot. Have you bought the tree? Tree? Have you bought the mistletoe? Wait a minute. Have you forgotten anybody? Wait. Mr. Gildersleeve. What do you want? We regret to inform you that federal regulations require payment for all charge purchases on or before the 10th of the month. <laughs> oh, go away, all of you. Christmas, I hate it. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, my goodness, what's happened? Mr. Gildersleeve. He's still warm. Go away, go away. Wake up. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Fitch, uh, let me see, where were we? Uh, afraid I dozed a little there. Uh, dear sir, read that back to me, will you? Mr. Gildersleeve, it's morning. Morning? Is there anything strange about that? Only that you slept here all night. Uh, I did? Oh, I must apologize, Miss Fitch. I'm afraid I need a shave. Oh, and the suit looks as if I'd slept in it. Oh, well... Let's finish this report and get it over with, huh? But you haven't even had breakfast. Breakfast can wait, for once. Uh, will you check these figures as I read them all? Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thank you. Uh, statement of financial status. Cash on hand, $386.52. Check. Uh, accounts receivable, uh, $2,873.38. Check. Interest, $139.10. Check. Marjorie, negligee, and slippers. Uh, Leela Ransom, passion flower. Uh, uh, there must be something wrong here. <laughs> I think there must. Yes, I guess I must have got to thinking about something else during the night. <laughs> Silly, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, uh, perhaps I should explain, Miss Fitch. I was thinking about my Christmas list. So I assume. Uh, yes. Uh, perhaps I should explain further, Miss Fitch. Passion flower is the name of a perfume. I know. I use it exclusively myself. Oh, maybe I better give it a little more thought then. <laughs> You know, Miss Fitch, I had the most awful dream last night. I don't wonder. Yes, I dreamed that I hadn't done a bit of Christmas shopping, which I haven't. But I also dreamed that it was the day before Christmas. I want to tell you I was frantic. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't want to spoil your dream, but it is the day before Christmas. Uh, what? It can't be. But it is. Uh, what happened to all those other days? There's a whole week I've lost track of. You've been working too hard. You've been going around here in a fall. Oh, but I haven't bought a single present. I haven't had breakfast. I haven't even had a shave. 
Oh, this is really going to be one of my bad days. Come right in, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're next. No waiting. Uh, good morning, Floyd. Gee, Mr. Gildersleeve, you look like the grapes are wrath. Uh, yes, I had a hard night last night, Floyd. <laughs> what happened? Did you run into some friends? Uh, no, no. I worked all night at the office. Ah, uh-huh, that's what they all say. I told you, Floyd, I worked all night at the office. Okay, okay, you worked all night at the office. I haven't had any breakfast either, so let's skip the conversation and make it a quick shave. All right, Mr. Gildersleeve, if that's the way you want it, that's the way it'll be. This is one place where the customer is always right. That's fine. If a man comes in here and doesn't feel like talking, that's all right with me. I can take a hint. Good. One thing I know how to do is hold my tongue. Good. I'm not like some barbers who go into their shop and they talk your ear off from the time you get into the chair to the time you get out of it. Good. I want people to feel they can come in here and just relax and not have to listen to a whole lot of stuff. Fine. Not that I haven't got my troubles like everybody else, but I keep them to myself. Good. Now, like last night, I came home after a long day, and my wife had dinner waiting for me, ham hocks and sauerkraut. So we had that and some apple pie, and after dinner, I took off my shoes and turned on the radio. I was just getting comfortable, and my wife's sister calls up. And what do you think she wants? Come right over and play pinochle. Well, if you know my wife's sister. Yeah. So I said to my wife, I said, nothing doing. I said, I'm all set here, I'm comfortable, and right here is where I'm staying. Good. I said, you couldn't move me out of here with a ten-ton truck. So we went over and played pinochle for a while, and then in comes the old company. Come in, Judge. Come in. Just finishing up with Mr. Gildersleeve here. He hasn't even started on me yet. Why, I'll have you shaved in two shakes. See that you don't, brother. I thought I'd find you here, Gildersleeve. How are you, Judge? What's on your mind? I just dropped in to serve notice on you, Gildersleeve, that after your recent performance, I'm not giving you any remembrance this Christmas. And please do not embarrass me by giving me any. Good day. Good day. Wait a minute. I don't know what you're talking about, Horace. I haven't seen you in a week. I've been very busy. Yeah, I'll say you've been busy. Busy over at Mrs. Ransom's. Uh, Judge, I haven't even had time. Don't deny it. The minute I told you I'd bought a ring, you went scurrying over there to try to cut me out. Was that the act of a friend? Well, Judge, the best laid plans of mice and men, gang after Glay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's scotch. <laughs> What's the matter? Did she turn you down? Wouldn't you like to think so? Well, she didn't. She merely asked for time to consider. It's the same thing. If she considers it, she won't do it. <laughs> when is she giving you her answer, Judge? Soon as she gets back from Savannah. Savannah? Now, that'll show you how innocent I am, Judge. I didn't even know she was going to Savannah. Now, don't try to give me that. You know as well as I do that she's going home to see her brother. On my word, Judge, I told you I've been busy this week. I haven't seen anybody. I don't know what your game is, Gildy, but this time it isn't going to work. I know all about Leela's plans, and I intend to be out at that airport today at 12 sharp to see her off. So do I, Judge, and thanks for the tip. 12 o'clock at the airport, is it? Well, if it hadn't been for you, I might have missed saying goodbye to her. Yeah. Gildersleeve, I've borne a lot from you, but this is the last straw. You now place me in the unpleasant position of having to ask you hereafter to do me the favor not to speak to me. Oh, anything for a friend, Judge. You know that. <laughs> Floyd? Merry Christmas. Bye, Judge. Same to you. Floyd, get going. I got a lot of ground to cover between now and Christmas. <laughs> I wonder if I'm in time. I wonder if she's left yet. Leela, have you left yet? Well, of all people, Mr. Gildersleeve. Leela, why didn't you tell me you were going away? I didn't suppose you'd care whether I came or went after the way you treated me last Saturday. I can explain that, Leela. You see? Pray don't bother. I'm hardly in the habit of having gentlemen run out on me without so much as a buy or leave. Uh, Leela, let's talk this over. Uh, aren't you going to invite me in? Well, if you're going to break my door down, I suppose I'll have to. Uh, thank but you. I'm leaving right away. I've got all my bags packed, and I'm expecting a gentleman to call for me any minute. I know. Hooker. I'm not saying who it is, but he's more of a gentleman than you are. Leela, about last Saturday, Bertie came back unexpectedly, and I had to go down to the station to meet her. Did you ever come back? Yeah, but Leela... Did I ever hear a word from you all week? But I haven't had a minute. I've had to get out the annual report of the water department. And if you know what that means... I know what it means. It means you care more for your old water work than you do for me. All I can say is I'm glad I'm going away. Oh, now, Leela. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, Leela, don't be like that. Leela. Oh, help. Somebody help. <laughs> Look, Leela, I, I bought you a present. You brought me a what? A present. A Christmas present. 
You see? It's got Santa Claus on it. You see? He's waving to you. Go on. Wave to Leela, Santa. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, you're such a fool. And you didn't forget, did you? Forget? How could I forget after what happened the last time I saw you? What happened, Throckmorton? Don't you remember? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. I just wanted to see whether you remember. By George, if there are any mistletoe around here, I'd show you whether I remember or not. Do you have to have mistletoe? He. <laughs> oh, gracious. It must be time to leave. Oh, Leela, don't go to Savannah. It's not patriotic to travel now. Oh, but I have to, Throckmorton. My only brother, Marvin, is leaving for the Navy. Oh. Hello, we haven't got any time to lose. Come in, George. Oh, you were so sweet to call for me, George. Not at all, not at all. A pleasure. My bag's already here, and I have a nice surprise for you. Throckmorton's coming to the airport with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I hope he's got his car. I'm afraid there won't be room in mine. Tell the judge we wouldn't think of crowding him, Leela. You can come with me and he can take the bags. Oh, yeah? Well, you tell Gildersleeve nonsense, for me. Nonsense, nonsense. Now, we can all ride in one car. We'll put the bags in back and all ride in the front seat. Leela, you either overestimate my seat or you underestimate Gildersleeve. Oh. <laughs> all right, let him take the bags up front with him. You and I will ride in back, Leela. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're going to be late. Who's going to carry out my bag? I've got them. Yeah, have not. I got this one first. Now, let's look oh, out. Boys, oh. boys. No fighting now, you hear? Good idea. Throckmorton gets to carry the suitcase and the hat box, and, and Horace gets the overnight case. Oh, Throckmorton gets everything. Say, don't forget your present, Leela. Oh, gracious, Throckmorton's present. Uh, pick it up when you come, will you, Judge? This thing? Uh, be careful of that hooker. Come on, come on. The plane leaves in half an hour. <laughs> That's your plane. Oh, my goodness, I'm so excited. You know, I've never been in a flying machine before in my life. I've got a good notion to come with you, Leela. Oh, I wish you could. Yeah, I think I'll stow away on the plane. I bet you would, too, Throckmorton. That blimp, there isn't room to stow him away on the B-19. <laughs> no, look here, Hooker. Boys, boys, this is Christmas Eve. Peace on earth, goodwill toward man. Well, he started it. I don't care who started it. I want you both to promise me one thing before I go. What's that? Promise me you'll both be friends while I'm gone. Come on now, shake hands. Mm. Shake hands, Throckmorton. Come on. Well, all right. <laughs> That's better. Now, you write to me every day, you hear? I will, Leela. I'll write twice a day. So will I. No, you won't. I will, too. Oh, uh... now. <laughs> oh, you're so impulsive, you boys. I want you to do me another favor. Anything you say, Leela. I want you both to spend Christmas together just thinking about me. <laughs> Mrs. Ransom? Uh, yes? They're holding the plane for you. For me? Oh, how nice. I'll be right along. Oh, my. Isn't he handsome in his uniform and all? Uh? I wonder if he's going, too. Uh, goodbye, Leela. Oh, goodbye, Throckmorton. I'll be waiting for your answer, Leela. My answer? Oh, yes. <laughs> Remember, you two, you're going to be good friends. And don't you dare open your present till Christmas, you hear? Mrs. Ransom, the plane is waiting. Oh, my goodness. I'm in such demand here. I hardly know what I'm doing. Just come with me, please. With you? Oh, you know, Captain, this is my first trip on a flying machine. Captain, I'll bet he's not even a sergeant. <laughs> Have a pleasant trip, Leela. Yes, she will. <laughs> There she goes. Yeah, she'll soon be 5,000 feet in the air. Yeah, that's right. Oh, dearie me. Now, oh, isn't that too bad? What? Something I forgot to give her. Huh? Your Christmas present for Leela. I'm still carrying. Oh! <clears throat> Fred Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds.
Nowadays, it's really a homemaker's duty to see that her family gets the right kind of foods. Yes, and it's just as much her duty to keep her food budget in line. Well, there's one important food that helps you do both these jobs. And that food is economical parquet margarine, the delicious, nutritious spread for bread made by Kraft. Parquet margarine is one of the kinds of foods that our government recommends for good nutrition. That's because it's so wholesome and nourishing. Actually, parquet is one of the best energy foods you can serve. What's more, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A, making it a really dependable source of this important vitamin the year round. Economical parquet, you know, is widely known as the margarine that tastes so deliciously good. So why not start serving it to your family tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow, sure, ask your food dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet, the delicious vegetable margarine made by Kraft. Now let's see what's happened to the great Gildersleeve. After a frantic three-hour battle in Hogan Brothers' department store, he bursts out of the store with his arms full of bundles and his hat over his ear. Uh, uh, Christmas. There ought to be a law against Christmas. Oh, there, Gildersleeve. Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas, Dr. Pettibone. If you see anything the matter with me, please keep it to yourself till after the holidays. But you're looking fine, old man. I was going to remark on it. Oh, do you think so? Never saw you looking better. Maybe those old arteries are beginning to soften for a change. <laughs> Teddy Bone, I'm in no mood for the humor of the dissection room. Oh, come, come, Gildersleeve. A cheery smile will do more for your digestion than all the Epsom salts in the world. Come on, Gildersleeve. Let me hear you say ha-ha. Ha-ha. Oh. <laughs> you can do better than that. Come on. Ha-ha-ha-ha. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's enough now. That's yeah. fine. Just keep smiling, and your gastric juices will thank you. My goodness. Let me see now. I got a present for everybody except Judge Hooker. That's fine. Well, hi, George. It's beginning to feel like Christmas. Yeah. Hooker. Da 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 dee da dee well, I wonder if I should break down and get Hooker a present. After what he pulled on me this afternoon, I know, but maybe he really did forget to give Leela that package. After all, this is Christmas. No time to bear a grudge. He isn't going to give me a present, though. I heard him say so. Yeah, but you can't trust him, Gildersleeve. He's just sneaky enough to go and do it. I could give him a little present, not a very good one. I could stop in here and get him something kind of cheap at the drugstore. <laughs> I think I will. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like you are. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. Hello, Phoebe. I didn't know that you were musically inclined, Phoebe. Well, no, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I, I do find myself humming a tune occasionally when I'm alone here in the shop. Oh, well, you know what they say. It's music makes the world go round. Or is it love? Uh, did you ever listen to this fellow Crosby, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, Crosby? Oh, yes, yeah. Quite a singer. One of the best. As a matter of fact, I've been compared to him once. Well, I was. Usually, I like to listen to him on Thursday night. So does Mrs. Peavy. Oh, Mrs. Peavy's a music lover, too. Huh? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, one of the things I'm giving her for Christmas is an album of records. Selections by John Philip Sousa. Yes, he happened to be playing at the Steel Pier when we were on our honeymoon. Oh. Well, between Crosby and Sousa, you can't go wrong. <laughs> hey, maybe you can help me out, Peavy. I came here to find a Christmas present. Oh, something for a friend? Well, I don't know that he's a friend, but i got to get him something. Then I dare say we can find something suitable, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, let's see. It doesn't have to be too suitable. Well, uh, what sort of thing does your friend like? He de doesn't even have to like it. It just has to be a present. Well, that makes it rather difficult. If you could give me some idea. Well, I'll tell you. I'm buying it for Judge Hooker. Judge Hooker? Well, it's a small world, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, is it, Peavy? Would you believe it? Judge Hooker was in here not over an hour ago selecting a present for you. Oh, uh, so this is the kind of place he comes to buy me presents, is it? <laughs> 
think you have a pleasant surprise in store for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. This gift is not the sort of thing you'd expect to find in a drugstore. I'd like to know anything you wouldn't expect to find in a drugstore. <laughs> tell me, Peavy, what did he buy me? Oh, well, no, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you that. Professional ethics, you know. But I, I want to know how good a present to buy him. At least you can tell me how much it cost. No, but I believe I can say without betraying any confidence that it was under $5. Yeah, good. Yeah, now we're getting someplace. And what have you got for an old goat that costs less than $5? Well, I've got a special on a fountain pen set here. Huh? You see, it says uh, double barrel, self-filling, iridium point, streamlined lucite case, special patented clip, indestructible, guaranteed to last till eternity. Is it any good? It's all right. You... <laughs> you can't expect everything for three ninety eight. Yes, sir. You say it's guaranteed to last eternity. Well, how long is that? Ten years? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Five years? If you don't drop it. <laughs> of course, if you don't care for the fountain pen, I, I have other things. I have an eight day clock here, but the thing about that is, I know you have to wind it too often. Mm. No, I'll take the fountain pen. May not last forever, but neither will Hooker. I uh, suppose you'd like it wrapped as a gift. Wrapped as a gift? What does that mean? Uh, take the price tag off. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Does this pen cost more than the present the judge is giving me or less? Well, the pen is slightly more expensive. Then leave the tag on it. I'll just take it as it is. <laughs> Charge that, will you, Peavy? Hogan Brothers got all my money. Well, glad to, Mr. Gildersleeve. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Oh, same to you, Peavy, and the same to uh, Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> You know, Leroy, maybe it's this green bulb that's making the trouble. It do look a little tired. Why don't you unscrew the bulb and stick the screwdriver in there? Oh, never do that, my boy. You blow out every fuse in the house. Besides, you can get a nasty shock that way. Well, that's what the electrician did when he fixed the lights last year. I saw him. Well, those electrician fellows are immune to electricity. Uh, let me have that other bulb there, will you, Bertie? Yes, sir. You know, Mr. Gillsleeve, when my vacuum cleaner starts acting up, I got a sure cure for it. Well, a vacuum cleaner is not like a light circuit, Bertie. Well, maybe not, but to me, all them electrical things is about the same. Goes in there and comes out here, and you better stay out of the way. <laughs> well, the trouble here doesn't appear to be the green bulb. Uh, uh, what is your cure, Bertie? Well, sir, I pull the plug out, and I turn it around... And I shake the bag three times and put the plug back. It ain't never failed yet. Well, we tried everything else. Yes, I can remember when we didn't bother with these electrical gadgets on Christmas trees. We just used candles. Set the house on fire every year, but it was a lot simpler. <laughs> well, go ahead and let's try your system, Bertie. All right. Stand back, Leroy. Now, pull the plug, turn it around, shake the cord. One, two, three. Put the plug back. Well, I'll be. Bertie, you're a genius. Mind you, come on in and see the beautiful tree. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. Let's turn off all the other lights and see how it looks. Hey, that's super. Oh, it's lovely. Isn't it, Uncle Moore? Yes, it is. It's lovely. That's the prettiest tree I ever saw in my life. Reminds me of the world's fair. Well, it's not as big a tree as we've had other years, but... And you think of all the people who aren't going to have any Christmas tree at all this year. You know what gets me? Every year, Uncle Mort says, Well, don't expect much this year, kid. We're going to have to cut down and just have a very small Christmas. <laughs> I know. And every year seems like there's more presents than ever. Oh, Uncle Mort, you've been so good to us. You've been like Santa Claus and Daddy and, and our favorite uncle all rolled into one. Yeah, you were swell, Uncle. Uh, now, now. <laughs> I made some of them Christmas cookies special for you, Mr. Gilfleeve. Shall I bring them in? Well, I can't think of a better time for Christmas cookies than right now, Bertie. I'll go get them. Yeah, cookies. I think I'm going to like this Christmas. Hey, Uncle, can we open just one present, can we, huh? Well, don't you think you ought to wait till Christmas, my boy? Oh, but you always let us open just one. I'll pick a little one. Well, all right, then. Just a little one. Come on, Marge. You pick one of yours, and I'll pick one of mine. Now, let's see what you got first. Gee, thanks, Uncle. War bonds. Just what I needed. Yes. Uh, not what you needed, maybe, but what the country needed. I know it may be something of a disappointment to you. No, I think it's swell. I don't care if I didn't get a Model P-47 with a motor in it. 
Well, it may mean that somebody else will get a real P-47 with a real motor in it. You have to think of that, my boy. Yeah, I just wish I was the fellow who's going to fly it, that's all. Open yours, Marge. Let's see what you got. Mm, I think I know. Is it, Uncle Mort? Well, you you open it and see. <laughs> you remember. What you got there, Miss Marjorie? Every year he gives me one. Listen. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's a darling one. <laughs> I love music boxes, and, and I love Christmas. Merry Christmas, Uncle Mort. <laughs> Merry Christmas, my dear. Uh, who's that? I'll go. Maybe it's Santa Claus. <laughs> well, for goodness <laughs> sake, come in, Judge. Good evening, Bertie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Judge. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Hello, Marjorie. Merry Christmas, Judge. Would you be good enough to ask your uncle, Marjorie, whether he's in? Ask the judge whether he's blind. <laughs> Oh, so that's your attitude. Well, you may recall, Throckmorton, that we gave a certain lady our promise that during her absence, we would be friends. Yes, I recall it vaguely. Well, I, for one, am a man of my word. Yeah. It's customary for friends to exchange tokens this holiday season. For that reason, and for no other, I have brought you a slight gift. Here. Oh. Well, now that you mention it, I have one for you. There. <laughs> Throckmorton Throckmorton You old son of a gun yeah. <laughs> Horace, you old goat, you Merry Christmas Merry Christmas By George, now it is a Merry Christmas Throckmorton, what do you say we open each other's presents, huh? Huh? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I just can't wait. I... Oh. That everlasting fountain pen. Ooh, that eight-day clock. <laughs> Rock Martin, I think Brother Peavy unloaded something on us. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. On behalf of the Kraft Cheese Company and the cast of our program, I'd like to wish all of our listeners a very Merry Christmas and the happiest possible New Year. There are many of us for whom it'll be difficult to be merry this Christmas, with loved ones far away and families divided. But let's try to keep up the Christmas tradition for the sake of the men who are fighting to preserve it. And to those men also fighting in foxholes and slit trenches on the sea and in the air, northeast, south, and west, we also send our Christmas good wishes. God bless you all. Good night, everybody. Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Ken Carpenter speaking to the makers of Kraft Cheese and inviting you to tune in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. You lovers of macaroni and cheese will get a thrill out of the new-fashioned way of making this grand dish with Kraft Dinner. A package of Kraft Dinner contains special macaroni, which cooks up fluffy and tender in just seven minutes. And the Kraft Dinner package also contains some Kraft Grated, which supplies the grand cheese flavor. You just boil the Kraft Dinner macaroni for seven minutes, drain it, and stir in the Kraft Grated. Your macaroni and cheese is ready to serve. Now, because Kraft Dinner is so simple to make, so good, and so economical, it has become tremendously popular throughout the country. So popular, in fact, that sometime a dealer's supply is exhausted by the end of the week. You can help your dealer and yourself, too, by ordering Kraft Dinner early in the week. Then you'll have it on the pantry shelf, ready for grand macaroni and cheese you cook in seven minutes. <laughs>